Hi, it's Polly here. Mm -hmm. mm. Plum wine, I'm a happy bunny. Okay, so look, I wanted to talk today about a real gem. It's from um, Freer Ligon. It is uh, their homebrew science fiction piece, and it is Coriolis. Now, this thing is uh, a spectacular piece of work. So, at its core, it uses the same general systems that Freeligan has had success with for their game mechanics. So, um, no huge surprises there, but the setting informs the system. And um, the setting, very beautiful indeed. So, it is a science fiction role-playing game, but <clears throat> it has been informed by um, things like Firefly. They wanted an exotic world, a world where actual kind of there is a taste of cultures. It's not just, you know, Southern California and outer space. It's not America and outer space. So it's got a, a very multicultural filter. It's very, um, their, their spin and it was Arabian Nights in space. So it's got a, a rather delicious feel to it, but also it's a place of cartels and influence groups and, um, you know, skullduggery behind the scenes. So, um, very interesting piece of work. A lot of science fiction forgets culture. That's why I love the books of Jack Vance, um, because, you know, 10,000 years from now, people will still vehemently believe in ghosts. Um, they will have things they do for good luck. They'll have their lucky pen. Um, they won't go near that spooky old place there because, you know, it's just got a creepy reputation. That's human nature. And so this is nice. It's a very, very humanist game. So the overall idea is that there is a, um, a section of space which has been colonized. The Third Horizon. Humanity discovered these gateways. They are alien constructed gateways and with this earth went and colonized a zone that one of these gates led to the first horizon and then there's a second horizon and then from those colonized areas another gate was found which went across to what was called the third horizon and the third horizon was largely populated by um populated by breakaway people it was intelligentsia it was you know space beatniks it was um religious cults it was people who had a bone to pick with mainstream culture and there was a huge war eventually when earth and the earlier iterations of colonies wanted to gain control of this area and the third horizon people fought them to a standstill and kicked them out long brutal war and finally they destroyed the gateway that leads from the other horizons to the third horizon so it is marooned however thrown to this mix in the very early days of um, space colonization some giant generation ships were sent into this area that has become the third horizon and they took many 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 hundreds of years to arrive one of them disappeared en route it just vanished but the main ship it arrived ta-da we are humanity's first old oh, bugger the place has already got you know freeways um <laughs> fast food syndication and you know radio stations uh, and um oh dear and uh, you know <laughs> quick everybody <laughs> is dubstep still a thing but um Ooh, so, uh, and there were these alien gates that linked different systems. So, giant colony ship sort of says, um, yeah, hi everyone. It does a tour of different places looking for somewhere to stop and call home. Well, you know, whoever kind of really habitable has been um, colonized. So it stops in orbit about the main planet of the horizon. There's a bit of a mutiny on board. Some people want to sort of go elsewhere. Some people want to stay. In the end, the captain and a lot of his group, they go down onto the surface of this planet where they become like a, a group of movers and shakers down in normal society. The ship itself turns itself into a massive space station because, you know, this thing was miles across. Um, they cannibalize systems, they reconvert things, and they make this huge space station. So here's where the other influence comes in. This thing has a very good tinge of like Babylon 5 to it because here is this massive, massive station which is 
an orbital meeting point for all these different local cultures, all these different syndicates, all these influences and so on. A lot of them are headquartered here on this mighty, mighty station. So a couple of different cool influences there. As I said, it is um, they went for an Arabian Nights feel. Now this expresses itself through, if you see the artwork in this thing, this beautiful artwork, it's got a slightly kind of ancient Egyptian feel to it. There's lots of characters wearing, you know, jabars and um, bonuses, and you know, so it's a very kind of Algerian, Middle Eastern kind of dress, but you know, science fiction eyes that they're wearing. But there's a religion which has come with this. So there are the icons. People believe in these mystic forces that control their lives. And again, this sort of informs part of the game system. Um, and everyone, whether you're a fervent believer in your know, unicult, you go to a church, whatever, or not, everyone's kind of got that little superstitious belief about these things. But there's also the darkness in the void. The hyperspace system of the gates, you jump from point to point, but there's sort of something out there. There's something evil kind of in the spaces between worlds. And this creeps into our universe. There are, they refer to them as jinn. There are effectively you know, evil spirits, things that can either take over a human body or simulate one and kind of work their own rather sinister purposes. But they're also outright horrible things. There are also some interesting leftovers from the old war. So we'll get to that in a bit. So character creation and everything, what you do is, as a group, you decide what kind of campaign you want to play, discuss it with the umpire. And so you might decide you want to be explorers. You might want to be, you know, mercenaries. You might want to be, you know, traders, rogues. Um, you decide. Now, there are things called traits. These are kind of bonuses that you can put to use with your character. Now, depending on the sort of group you've decided, you get group traits that all the characters can draw on. So if you're a wheeler and dealers, you get some kind of, you know, making a deal um, kind of traits that you can use. If you're explorers, you get some explorer ones. If you're fighters, you get kind of fighty ones. So it creates a group resource for everybody to draw on. Within those different campaign frameworks, it has suggested character archetypes you can take. There are several different archetypes you can choose from which speed up play, but you can design something from scratch yourself. There, it's a, uh, a point by system for creating characters. No problems. It is a nice, simple system for doing the characters, but it's got a lot of depth because what you do, your group gets a nemesis. There's a syndicate that doesn't like you. Think of Firefly again. We've got the Alliance, you know, working against the Firefly people. They, they dislike them. Or we've got some criminal organizations that they both know and dislike, but can work with. You've also got an ally somewhere, someone you can go to, someone you can get jobs from, someone you can speak to. So that's a group resource. When you design your characters, you can also get nemeses, you get personal backstories, you have things that have happened. You're all out here adventuring because of something in your past. You generate this as part of your character. Um, so you actually start off with a character that's got a bit of a story to them, which is really nice. And you get the expected um, skills and so on, but you also get traits. You pick traits which will you know, aid the kind of play style that you're wishing to do. You can gain more traits and so on, and this game is set up for character experience. Um, it's so, for instance, that was always a problem with some of the older science fiction games like Traveller. When you start the game, you are as butch and tough as you'll ever be. There isn't really a, a sort of an experience system. This one has one. So, um, you also get a ship. People get a ship suitable for their mission. and. That may or may not have you in, in debt a bit, depending on how uh, elaborate you decide to get. Mm -hmm. But now we get to sort of other things. It has a ship design system and it's a good one. A lot of ship design systems are filled with very fussy maths. This is a nice modular system. You get different modules that do different things. 
holds are a framework so you can design things some of them will get you bonuses some of them very vital to the operation of the ship some of them allow you to do things there's, there's labs and there's living quarters you can have spivved up living quarters that are um, um, you know bright and shiny you can have um, little things suitable for just sort of shelving um, um, troops or you can have uh, recreational areas these all kind of get you interesting bonuses and so on so you can make this thing you can also stock it with food and the kind of living that you have um, becomes quite important. Eh? Are you eating ramen out of packets? Or, you know, have you got a personal chef on level three? But you, you can do all that. So, out you go. The ship is your home. It's, it emphasizes this, this is your way where you live. Now, there's a very good ship combat system with this. And um, everyone's got something to do when there is like a ship combat going on. The pilots, pilot engineers fix things but also attune systems so that you get more efficiency out of them other people are working sensors are running um, damage control firing guns um, medics but also those of you who might have some kind of psychic edge can be doing this as well the normal game system what you're doing is you're taking um, a number which is the um, number of your skill all skills are attached, of course, to a uh, characteristic, which is also a number. You take that number of dice and you throw them. Normal d6, sixes are hits. If you get more than one six, then you get a special effect. Um, obviously, if you are contesting against someone or it's a difficult action, you might need one or more hits, or you have to beat the number of hits the other guys get. But when you have rolled, what you can do is you can pray to the icons. You can... Um, pick up dice that didn't roll a six and re-roll them. But what this does is the umpire gets a darkness point <laughs> and puts it off to one side. And those darkness points, the idea is that the icons will help you, but the universe balances itself. If you lean on them too much, essentially it's a little, little gap that the darkness uses to get in and work against you. So these darkness points essentially are ill luck. Now, they can be used to do things like when you're in a combat, the umpire plays a darkness point to say your magazine's empty, your power pack ran out, um, your gun's jammed, um, all these sorts of things are the umpire playing darkness points. And you know, this is an, a, a way of keeping that play unpredictable. These things can also be gathered together so multiple darkness points can be played to bring in reinforcements for the baddies, to bring in a new nemesis, to um, introduce some horrible creature. Um, but people are going to want to pray to those icons. There are also some different effects depending on which icon that you prayed to. And uh, there's a nice write-up on all of these different uh, icons, there's art ones, and there's sort of guides for the dead, and there's justice ones, and it's, it's really very cool. Um, now, what you can also do is, before play, if you set aside time for your prayer and contemplation to a particular icon, you actually can get some extra dice to roll. So if you, you're kind of encouraged to, to buy into this belief system that they've got. So, um, again, it's it's... A level of mysticism that you don't see in a science fiction role-playing game normally. It's humanocentric. Uh, you are humans, but many, many, many hundreds of years have passed since they left Earth. So there are some worlds that have changed the people that live on them, and in some cases, people have deliberately bioengineered themselves to be more suitable. So there are some rules for taking characters that aren't um, old-school humans. Um, there is also a slight social difference between people that came in on the um, generation ships and the people who lived here. You know, you know, the, the, they, they, they contend with each other from time to time. There's also um, Bioware, uh, so on that people can get to um, improve themselves. There's sort of um, biological implants and additives that you can get. Um, people can, you know, deliberately make themselves sort of beautiful, enhance memories, um, all kinds of things. You can kind of Surgically tool with characters, you know, mechanically uh, implanted um, material, um, um, biological enhancements. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of kind of, of character malleability there. Tech-wise, they've got some cool kind of tech. Yes, there's, there's um, slug throwing rifles and, and um, gyrojet style things. There's gauss style rifles. There's other uh, power ones which fire off, you know, 
plasma and so on, which require heavy backpacks. Uh, there's armor. Uh, they've got uh, kind of an interesting sword type. You've got power melee weapons, should anyone desire one. Um, so they've got like pistons or um, um, the old uh, chainsword. So it's something that gives a, a mechanical enhancement to a normal melee weapon. They've also got these cool kind of uh, liquid metal blades and so on. We've got liquid metal of some kind in a handle and a uh, magnetic field actually turns that into a solid blade when you need it so you can have kind of a concealable sword on you and um yeah, so you know there's some really nice little edges where it's it's a tech aware game so there are drones and you know things that are often left off the list in in um many science fiction settings now that comes with a complete rundown on the uh the whole region that this is set in so all of these different planets are detailed they have um their own cultures they have their own um environments now the other thing that happens is due to this huge war there are bio constructs and there are mechanical constructs and so on still out there uh, there's lots of wreckage that you can go through and you can find you know like so you can go out junk hunting and so on but you have to be aware that there are still mechanisms out there that may try and kill you so you can go basically dungeoneering in space uh, there are huge complexes lost on some of these things that you can explore there are entire cities um, that you know were depopulated you can get down there and go through them but you've got to be aware also if terrible things happen in these places creatures of darkness are there and there's some beautiful kind of spooky artwork for these things because of this mystic level there is a layer of mystic enemies which is also missing from most science fiction settings there are you know horrible mind controlling life sucking vampiric downright scary things that can creep into play and depending on what the characters do if they expose themselves more and more to darkness these things may actually start targeting them so there are um, an array of different um, cabals who've all got um, lots of detail about them what their aims and goals are so in this case it's taking a little bit of the taste of something like dune um, so there's lots of skullduggery you can end up working for different cabals but this sets you against different people they're also small players not just the major ones um, these players are not only corporations but they're also religions cults um, political movements this sort of thing so there's a political life to this setting which again makes it quite interesting quite active so play style for this there's everything from you know grab your guns your mercenaries you you're going off to do things to exploring finding new areas um exploring old areas dungeoneering in space finding old um relics um going through these gates and finding entire new areas um are people from the other horizons still out there will you encounter them and the darkness encroaching in so there's um you you can literally play games where you're, where you're exorcists or um monster fighters that are there kind of casting out these things that are insidiously working their way into society and you know lurking in the dark spaces in stations and so on so um it's a great setting now look it's really well supported so um there are some um hardcover adventure books for this um which are um campaigns there's also campaign material which they've done um so there are um smaller um there are lots of smaller adventures the dying ship our secret last boys the goes ali there's all these kind of things so you've got um adventure support um on their website you will find things like this this is their um um gm shield which has all the uh, appropriate charts and tables on the back and again spooky spooky artwork on the front um it comes with um cool atlases of the current setting there's a uh, atlas compendium and so on so look it's it's well supported um and beautifully detailed not it's it's a read um but it's a read that you'll like a lot of things throw too much material at you this gives you the universe but doesn't bulk you down with um, ridiculous historical details 
So look, you know, I think if I was going to run a science fiction game at the moment, this would really be my game of choice. It's, uh, it's a good system. Uh, it's an involving setting. It's a setting that's got kind of spooky mysticism in it. Um, lurking monsters, space dungeons, cabal. So you can do Firefly style heists and things. Um, you can do, um, you know, um, deep political fights, you, you know, so you can get your June on. Um, you can, um, um, you know, do all kinds of dungeoneering in space, exploration, um, boldly go. Uh, what a great piece of work. They're continuing to support it. So look, if you haven't checked it out, Coriolis, go and have a look. It's, um, it's evocative, it's spooky, it is gorgeously illustrated, uh, so it communicates the feel of the place very well. Really highly recommend you take a look at it. So um, yeah, go out and find a copy. Cheers.